Hey everybody, this is me doing another reading of the Codex Fluff, taking on after first contact with High Feet Behemoth, called The Behemoth. Having scoured Tyran Primus of biomass, the alien High Fleet moved on in search of other worlds to feed upon pushing its tendrils ever deeper into the galaxy, whilst the death screams of an entire world went unheard. Were it not for a single man, Inquisitor Cryptman, the fate of Tyran Pryrus might have gone entirely unnoticed. After all, the galaxy is a big place. Mysteries are commonplace, and the Imperium is as slow to react as only a monolithic bureaucracy can be. Whilst in time, many other Inquisitors, including such distinguished names as Servac, Agmar, and Locke, would come to realize the true threat of the hive mind. Were it not for Kripman, it is its very existence would not have been known before it was already too late. Indeed, whether through a quirk of fate or some investigative instinct, Crippman's decision to personally investigate Tyran's mysterious silence proved vital to the Imperium's survival. By the time Crippman reached Tyran Primus, a year had passed since the attack. At first, the Inquisitor could not equate the husk of a planet he found to ocean-bound Tyran Primus. The world had been sucked dry. Every scrap of vegetation and every drop of water was gone. A crater was all that remained of the Adeptus Mechanicus outpost, and all that could be found of the planet's cruiser fleet were acid-eaten husks, icy shells devoid of life and adrift in space. After a long search, Inquisitor Kripman recovered Magos Varnak's data codex. The knowledge contained within it brought with it the life of of an entire planet. What Crippman saw when he reviewed the fragmented data was a dire prophecy of doom. Static-laced images of scythe-limbed aliens, footage of the skies over Tyran turning black with swarming monsters, and orbital picked views of a fleet of living ships so vast that the stellar horizon was veiled in inky blackness. Crippman felt hollow as he realized what he had discovered. Not wasting another moment, the Inquisitor set forth to warn the galaxy of the oncoming horror from beyond the stars, a horror he named Tyranids for the doomed world they had consumed. Kripman ordered his astropath to send a warning to the Imperium, but the Psyker could not penetrate the warped turmoil left by the passing of the alien fleet. Even the nearby Thandros Telepathica Booster Matrix was obscured. In desperation, Kripman set course for Thandros in the hopes of re-establishing communication with the Imperium there. The Fate of Thandros It was on the voyage that Kripman realized the scale of the Tyranid threat. Following in his Hive Fleet's wake, Kripnan discovered a string of barren worlds that records indicated should be verdant and lush. Reviewing a decade's worth of planetary survey data, Kripnan saw a pattern emerging. He was able to plot the High Fleet's course by the trail of dead and lifeless worlds it had left behind. There was no subtlety in the High Fleet's approach, no sense of strategic genius. It merely plowed through the galaxy without stopping, devouring everything in its path with a rapacious hunger that would become its defining feature. As dictated by tradition, Kryptman codified the new alien threat with an ancient and forbidding name from legend, Behemoth. Though Kryptman's ship made good speed, the Tyranids had attacked Thandros' system, and moved on long before his arrival. Thandros was not as well protected as Tyran, and was similarly unable to hold back the swarms of Tyranid horrors that railed against them. The Telepathic Matrix was found to have emptied all of its turret magazines, 
and burned out its defense laser crystal before being overrun. Thandros had fought bravely, but its populace had been slaughtered. A Voice in the Dark While th with Thandros lost, Kryptman's quest became critical. The next system in Behemoth's path was Ultramar. And unless forewarned, the Imperium might lose its best chance to stand against the Tyranid onslaught. With haste, Kripman salvaged the Telepathica Matrix, and, through a Herculean effort, his astropath finally managed to pierce the shadow of the warp to contact the unsuspecting Imperium. The astropath, nose and ears bleeding from the effort, broadcast Kripman's warning. One voice spoke back from the dark, and it came from McCrag, the heart of Ultramar and the home world of the Ultramarines chapter of Space Marines. The Ultramarines had heard Inquisitor Kripman's call, but the message was garbled and incomplete. The Space Marines knew that a dire threat was approaching, but they did not fully understand the true nature of their foe. Knowing he would have to decipher, deliver his report in person, Kryptman set a course for McCrag. The navigator of Kryptman's ship strained to follow the guidance light of the Astronomicron through the swirling energies of the warp space. At times, the undertow left by High Fleet Behemoth threatened to lose the Inquisitor's ship in the warp. But the navigator avoided every whirlpool and riptide with consummate skill and Kryptnan somehow arrived at McCrag ahead of High Fleet Behemoth. Inquisitor Kryptnan met with Marnius Calgor, chapter master of the Ultramarines, beneath the portico of his white marble palace. Calgor stood in a, as a giant before the Inquisitor, his stature grand even amongst the superhuman warriors of the Space Marines. Calgar listened intently, but Kripman's terrible discoveries did not disturb his noble demeanor. Nothing escaped Calgar's notice, not one detail about the foe that could be turned into an advantage. High Fleet Behemoth was fast approaching, and the Ultramarines chapter prepared for the greatest battle in their history. And then a quote from Kripman. An alien threat has arisen from beyond the abyss, a swarm so vast that it blots out the stars. This horror fights neither for power nor for territory, but rather to feed a hunger so insatiable that it will eventually devour the entire galaxy. Inquisitor Kripman. There you go. Uh, the next one after that was part three, which I've already done, which is Bioships and the Battle of McCrag. So check that out if you want to hear more. And I'm also doing a reading of Mark of Kalf and a word bearer's uh, The Underworld War, if you want to see that too. See you next time.